thank you for joining us this afternoon for this Tech Academy session. We're going to be talking about Workfront Fusion and the power of integration and automation. Um, it's a very important topic. And uh, my name is Joshua Young. I am the solution sales lead for EMEA for content and Workfront. Um, and I work closely with Martin, who's uh, also on screen here, you can see he's a solution consultant um, working specifically in Workfront. He's going to introduce himself in a few moments when he starts. Um, but let me go ahead and, um, and start talking specifically about what are the business challenges and what are the reasons why this is important and what are the challenges that end users have in organizations. Um, number one, information is siloed in different applications, making it difficult to search, access, and use. So if you consider the broader marketing ecosystem, there's a lot of different applications being used, often by different departments, and it makes it difficult if it's not consolidated and dispersed across multiple applications to be able to find information, uh, content, and other things to be able to share um, and have a transparent view of how projects are executing when they leverage so many different tools to do so. And those applications, number two, don't integrate with one another, which means data and other information might not be moving back and forth between the applications. And it's difficult to collaborate effectively across those applications because of that, which is number three. And that collaboration challenge makes it hard for teams to work together when you're working with a bunch of different uh, disciplines and skills across different tools. And since no one application can do everything that's necessary, that means too many applications are necessary and needed in order to accomplish a lot of different projects. And so the need to integrate is important and to do so in a transparent way so that teams can actually work together effectively and see efficiency and the ability to collaborate when working on projects. And so, uh, you know, what do we look at when we um, see how businesses are responding to these challenges? Well, organizations are looking for no or low code solutions to help ease the, the pressure on IT teams to build integrations and uh, simplify the ability to have these applications at least pass data uh, and be in a position where you can track and understand progress for projects across these applications. Citizen developers are emerging in their own business units with the ability to build their own solutions. So simplifying the ability to integrate allows more democratization of management of content and management of data and working across different teams. And businesses need a cohesive system of record for their ecosystem to really understand the broader picture of what's happening, how are projects moving, that transparency with the true system of record for an individual organization's ecosystem is critical um, in order to make sure there's efficiency seen, projects are moving well, um, and everybody understands what, you know, what's going on with their tasks and what needs to be uh, taken care of across all these different applications. And so there's this need to have a seamless integration across all of these different systems of record and Workfront is able to sit at the center of this. And I'm gonna turn this over to Martin now, who's gonna go into a lot more detail and how this actually works and what this means when you try to you know, kind of orchestrate your entire ecosystem into a way that your team can work more efficiently. Martin? Perfect, thank you. Um, so as part of Adobe's Experience Cloud, Workfront provides capabilities and tools to support that system of record for marketing. However, we understand that there are other key systems of record within a customer's ecosystem as well. So, for example, you've got your CRM. So this is your system of record for all of your customer data and tracking all of those opportunities. So you want to ensure that all of that client information is coming from the system. And maybe you want to trigger the creation of a project once an opportunity has re reached a certain sales stage. That's absolutely critical in building out this ecosystem. Then we have our IT system of record. So being able to track all of those dev tasks or requests, but keeping it in context of the other work. And of course, all of the status of these requests and tasks affects the other work that we're doing. So we need that tied in. Then we move on to our insight or our data visualization tools. So we can aggregate all of the data from these systems and see all of that operational performance data in context. Then we know that Workfront has fantastic resource management capabilities. 
But to make the most of it, we need to enrich that with our users' data. So this is where our HR system comes in. So you're going to want to bring in people's roles, their skills, you know, what certifications they have, what languages they speak, and making sure that that work's being assigned to the right person or knowing what hours they work, what time zone they're in, and obviously taking into account any personal time off they have as well. And then finally, we have our ERP. So again, we need to keep our customer information aligned all the way through this process. So from our CRM to our work management to our ERP, we need to keep track of all of the work that's been done so that we can bill it. And that's not just labor. You know, that's project expenses as well. We need to capture all of that information. And of course, the status of that work, you know, everything that we're producing could be driving billion milestones or it could inform you know, revenue recognition purposes. So we need to have all of that built in together. But it's easy for me to kind of scribble over this diagram here and, and explain what we need, but how do we actually go about achieving this? So, in Workfront, uh, you can integrate it with various third-party applications, and there's a few different ways of doing this. So Workfront provides native integrations, so you can configure these directly from within Workfront or for, from within another application by installing the Workfront add-on. And these built-in applications, they cover really common use cases, and they focus on extending and connecting the user experiences for the end users. So we've got a variety of native integrations available, such as the Adobe Creative Cloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, SharePoint, Outlook, Teams, Slack. You know, for example, our Workfront for Creative Cloud application that you can see here, you can receive all your notifications about your Workfront work items. Then without even leaving that Creative Cloud application, you can perform all the actions like viewing the task information, viewing the briefing, logging your time, sending the asset out for review all without ever leaving that tool. We've also got our public API. So that enables you to extend and enhance that workfront experience. And the goal of the API is to simplify building your own integrations. So having that fully RESTful architecture that op operates over HTTP. Now, this does require some technical knowledge, but it's a very powerful tool for retrieving, creating, and modifying data. In addition, we also have our event subscription API. So when an action occurs on a Workfront object, you can configure Workfront to send a response to your desired endpoint. So this means that those third-party applications can receive updates from, work, from Workfront automatically after they occur. And then third and finally, we have Workfront Fusion, which is kind of the reason everyone's on this call today. So as depicted by my beautiful Firefly image here that I created, Fusion is our automation and integration superhero. So it enables you to connect multiple applications and web services together in a visual way. Essentially, it gives you all of the building blocks that you need to build out effective automations and integrations. So within Workfront, what we have are what we call connectors. So here you can see a subset of those, and these are essentially wrappers for an application's API. So you no longer need to write lines and lines of code or have to understand the underlying system's API. You can get started straight away, and we've got a variety of pre-built connectors available for you to use. And these cover multiple different tools, You know, some that we see very often in the integrations that are required in an ecosystem like this. But we can also use them to connect to the rest of the Adobe ecosystem. So we're continuing to add new connectors all of the time, and we even provide pre-built templates. So our goal is to make you get connected as fast as possible. So what do these connectors actually do, and what do they look like? Well, let's jump in and, and kind of see exactly what makes up a connector. So like I said, the connector gives you the ability to run commands without having to know the API. And as you can see here, I've got a variety of different options that are available to me, all specific to that application. And you'll notice that they're broken down into triggers and actions. So for a trigger, what's gonna start this scenario? Is an event that's happening, like the creation of a new request or a new project being, being added? 
or is it a change to an existing work item or even a change to a field somewhere? If you've got a custom field within Workfront, any of these things can kick off a scenario. And then you've got your actions. So now it's been triggered, what do you want to happen? So for example, I can create a record, which in the context of Workfront could be a project or a task or an issue. Maybe I want to convert an object, like I want to convert a request into a project automatically. That's all possible using these actions. And of course, if you're connecting to another system, they may require the data in a different format. So we have all of the tools that you need to transform and manipulate that data as required. And with, within all of these connectors, each of them has specific uh, options that are contextual based on the tool you're looking at. So for an example, if you're looking at an email type connector, you're gonna have very different functions as to what you see in the previous slide. So here you wanna be able to create or send emails or move them, delete them and so on. Or in this example, we're actually connecting to Jira. So if we've got a development team that wants to continue to work in that way, okay, let's all work together. Uh, we can watch for records to change. We can create and delete records. We can download attachments, read messages, add things to sprints. You can see that all of these options are unique to that application. And finally, for any system or application that's not specifically listed, so if we don't have a connector already available for it, as long as they accept HTTP or web service requests to them, Fusion can still integrate with them. Now, naturally, these may need a slight bit more of configuration, but this means that you can connect to essentially any web-based application out there. So you've got your building blocks. Let's start to put these together and see what that looks like. And a workflow within Fusion is called a scenario. And this is what it looks like here. Now, in this case, this is a workfront automation. So we're keeping it all within workfront. There's no external applications involved at this point. And let's think about a very traditional workflow. So a workfront users come in, they have filled out a briefing form and they've submitted a request. Typically, another user would review that request see what's being asked. They would then convert that request into a project and they would choose the appropriate template. Doesn't take too long, but there's still that human interaction and that, that personal review of having to look and see what's being asked of you. Well, what's happening in this workflow here is that we're monitoring for new requests. So we can filter this down to a specific request queue where we want this to be actioned and it's instantly going to convert that request into a project. It could even create a portfolio and a program structure if it needs to as well. And by using all of the information that we've captured on that briefing form, it can make sure that the project is using the correct template. And each of these branches actually has a filter on it. So it's ensuring that the correct template is being used each time. And if it happens to match multiple, if someone submits a, a campaign brief, we could automatically create each of those projects or, or even think about attaching multiple templates as part of that process. So let's expand on this and add another application into the mix. So you wanna make sure that when your project's complete, that all of the latest approved assets are sent over into the DAM ready to be distributed. So here, our Fusion scenario, instead of waiting for an event, it's actually looking for a status change. So it's looking for that status of that project to be changed to closed or complete. What Fusion is then doing is it's looping through all of the tasks that happen to contain documents, downloading them, and then uploading them into our DAM, which in our case is Adobe's Experience Manager assets. We can make sure that all of the metadata is mapped so we have access to all of the information that we've captured throughout this process. So anything from the brief all the way through to the project, the task or the document. And we're even gonna get a little Slack message to let us know that that process is complete. And if for some reason this scenario encounters some issues, well, we're actually gonna track that by creating an issue and posting an update directly within Workfront. 
So that's what that little secondary branch is doing. So. Now you've got an idea of the tools that you've got available, let's start right from the beginning and, and build a scenario together. So I'm in my instance of Workfront Fusion and I'm presented with a dashboard that shows me all of the recent activity. Now, I can go in and I can build a scenario from scratch, but today I'm actually going to use a template. So we provide multiple templates to help you get started, and it covers a lot of the most common use cases that we see, and we're continuing to add to this all the time. Now, for today, I actually want to build a workflow to help clean up my Workfront instance. So as a sysadmin, I'm going to scroll through until I find a template that does what I need. So here you go. I want to make sure that all of the projects are being updated and else not, I'll, I'll close them down. So uh, I'm going to create a new scenario by using this template. And I just need to make sure it's assigned to the correct organization and the correct team to make sure that the correct users have access to this. And it's going to walk me through building out this scenario. So starting with you know, some variables, what do I consider a, a, a late number of days or what's the style number before I want to close this project down? So I'm going to define that. As it walks me through the rest of the tools, uh, I need to make sure that one, it's pointing to the right work front instance. So I have access to multiple. I'm going to make sure that's connected to the correct one. I'm going to make sure that all of the variables are correct. I want to make sure that it only matches, it matches those which have a status of complete. And I want to make sure that they haven't been updated within a certain time frame. And you can see that here I'm actually using variables that I've got available. And these are the ones that I defined in those previous tools. And I can still configure them if I need to. So we've got functions on you know, dates, times to manipulate that data and come up with that automatically. So here I'm actually going to use the add days functionality to add on those five days onto today's current date. And that's when I want to run this workflow. I also note that uh, it's actually recommended to me that I should refine this using a portfolio ID or a program ID. So I'm going to take the best practice advice and I'm going to add that in. So you can see I have access to all of the fields within Workfront, again, without having to know the API. I'm going to find that portfolio ID and it's going to be equal to, and I'm just going to paste in the ID that I've already got from the Workfront UI. So moving on to the next tool, um, again, I just want to check that connection, make sure that it's pointing at the right instance. And I can see the message that's going to be pasted into Workfront once this, uh, once this scenario runs. What you'll see now is that because it's further on in that, in that workflow, I have more variables that I can use. So as you move on, all of the outputs from each of these tools are available to drive the, net, the rest of that workflow. And some of these tools, they might not require any configuration at all. I just need to point them to the right instance and you should be good to go. Let's add in some error handling. And again, you can see that that error message is only available at this point in the workflow once it's gone past those other tools. And of course, at any point, I can actually go back into any of those tools. So if I need to configure them further, if I want to map additional fields, um, I'm welcome to do that. So for example, I can go in here and again, I'm going to be able to see all of those workfront specific options available to me and complete that with data from anywhere else in the system. So once I'm happy with this, I can go ahead and save this scenario. I could also add some notes. So if anyone comes in and use this, they know exactly why this workflow was created, what's the use case behind it. We can even add this onto individual tools if we want to explain in more detail exactly what's going on, which is going to really help in, in that process. 
and we can import new workflows we can export them out as well to, to provide them with different teams but for now we're going to run this once we don't want to actually wait for uh, for this to happen and we're going to see this live and in real time exactly what's going on so you'll see uh, on that first workfront icon we've received a single bundle and if we click on uh, that little speech bubble we'll see exactly what we received so we got the names of our projects we got the last updated dates which again was outside of, of that variable that we specified and it's going to output there we go we've got 28 uh, projects that match that criteria all the way through including any of the filters we can see exactly why they matched so we have a full audit trail there and then it's going to start to go through those operations one at a time and we can see what text has been generated and on what project that's now been mapped to and of course this is just my test but we could set this to run weekly on a schedule um, and we can go through and we've got the full audit history there of what's been run and should there be any errors. Again, we always build that in as part of our workflows. Now, if we jump over back into Workfront, what this has actually done is this has now posted that update directly into that update stream in context of that project. So that's one of the ones that was identified as being a stale project. It's pushed that update and it's used my user to do so. And it's also picked up the project owner. So it knows that Dave Hoffman is the owner of this project. So we've specifically mentioned him within this alert to let him know that there hasn't been an update and we haven't closed this project down. And actually there's a five day window before we're gonna close this. And again, this is taken into consideration uh, the next time the workflow runs to let us know, have we already alerted them? We don't wanna end up in this infinite loop. We'll send them down a different path and close that project down and run a cleanup. So there you have it, right? This is a fairly simple use case for a sysadmin. This is fantastic in keep, keeping your workfront instance nice and clean. But in approximately five minutes, we have a live working automation, something that would have traditionally taken a lot longer using you know, those other development methods. And we can extend this out to whatever other application you need, you know, thinking back to with those systems of record messages that we, we went through at the start, getting an idea of what we could define and what would be those trigger points to those other systems to help drive those workflows. And it leads me to this, right? No one wants to spend their time entering data in multiple places or checking multiple systems. For people to do their best work and to work most efficiently, they have to have these systems integrated. And tools like Fusion are helping to drive this success. You know, the ease and the speed of, of how you can get things up and running is fantastic. We're talking now days instead of weeks and being able to see that in a visual way. And even if there's errors, being able to go through that and unpick a workflow and figure out what it's doing is so much easier when you have it in this style of system. So uh, I believe we have uh, some time now for some Q&A. Uh, I don't know if there's been any in the chat or uh, feel free to fire away. Well, while they're firing, I'll ask you <laughs> a couple questions. Uh, you know, you, I know you, uh, uh, I, I know that you participate in a number of conversations with customers as they're looking at Fusion and, and Workfront in general. I mean, you know, when you, when you talk to customers, what are some key integration points that, are critical that you commonly hear and then obviously the excitement of how this can solve those problems for them quite easily i mean it'd be interesting to hear what are some good you know examples of of systems and and their tooling in general and you know, that leads to work processes and teams around integrations yeah. that have made like a, a substantial difference to uh customers that you've had had time to you know talk with yeah so uh I guess going back to the OSR ones, those are the ones that come up all the time. Um, the HR one is a big one, particularly if you're talking agency space where you're working with 
you know, maybe a, a follow the sun style model. So instead of just having resources in a single location, we need to know, you know, not only do they have the skill set to do it, but if I want to go and use a, another resource in a different location, what are they going to cost me? You know, is this going to affect the profit margin on this project that I'm running? I need to have all that information to make that informed decision. And we've got people from you know, 20 person companies up to you know, 50,000 people filtering down to make sure they get that exact person and the right person doing this on, on, on the right work. Something that's really interesting is that I've got a couple of customers at the moment who are actually tying this into AI tools as well. So it's then going, okay, I know that this person typically works on automotive style work, or this is where they want to go in the future to hone their skill set. And they can start to suggest the type of work that we should be assigning to them. And that's all feeding back into that resource management piece. Yeah, so so basically uh, being able to, the open ability to integrate with so many different tools even allows the integration with even some external AI tools that can be leading to decisions and, and information that can flow through the, you know, through the life cycle of a project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, a lot of people think of projects having to be created from a request queue or someone making a project. You know, internally, we actually have it linked into our CRM. So we track our you know adobe consulting services when they're tracking an the opportunity and it gets changed to a specific sales stage so we say this is closed one we already have this statement of work here we know what the deliverables are we don't need someone to re-enter that so we create a project in Workfront. it has the right tasks it knows who's been assigned to it it knows who the customer is what they've paid how many hours we've got all of that information to get that going straight away yeah, well, I would I would say then, and you can maybe back this up that the, uh, you know, the 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 number of tools that sit inside a tech stack and an ecosystem at an organization is actually growing, not shrinking, <laughs> because of things like AI, right? And so, being able to have the ability to expand and multiply the reach and how, you know, how can how we can work with all these different tools would, would definitely prove efficiencies for for customers they don't have to worry as much about over oh, adding a new tool to the stack how's that going to sit and work with our work management right yeah yeah exactly and even you know we talk about these systems of record but a lot of the people i talk to they don't even necessarily have them at an organizational level yet so yes they may have standardized on a crm um, but it may be a different version of within each region or within some of their sub brands so you can follow a common model and a common workflow in how you want them to integrate, but being able to almost have those integrations, duplicate them, change those endpoints and get them up and running is, is really interesting. Something else that's come up quite often and it's something we're actually gonna add into our template library soon is for work front to work front integrations. So we're seeing lots of say agencies and brands both having instances of work front and they're going, well, you know, we wanna live in our one, we wanna live in our one, how do we make them all work together? And can we seamlessly pass work between them and, and work together? And we've seen that be quite successful and that that's going to be a kind of standard model moving forwards. Yeah, and then that led me to another question, which is how much this might help uh, for an organization that has a, uh, a strategy of acquiring new businesses and having to you know kind of incorporate new tech into their ecosystem through an acquisition. Then this would obviously help with that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's never going to be... Uh, Kind of magic button of being able to switch off one system and move them over and this is going to kind of help ease that process by being able to have those common common workflows and models until the point if they ever decide to merge that technology together very good well thank you martin so much and with that i'll close out thank you so much for joining us today on this tech academy session mm -hmm.